in the area of politics, a new kind of politics will emerge when we decide that we are all one. The differences will no longer have to produce divisions. I am calling for, and I hope you will join me in calling worldwide for a new kind of politics, what we're going to call oneness politics, a politics that do not have to produce divisions, and a politics where contrasts do not have to create conflicts. Currently, we are making each other wrong in order to make ourselves right. The worldwide political system operates on a basis of separation. You're over there, and we're over here, and of course we're right and you're wrong. It is very common. It is how human beings seem to make the points they want to make. But in the days of the new human, in the days of the new oneness, the idea of separation will disappear from our political arena. We will be able to have differences. It's important to understand something. When I talk about oneness, we're not talking about, about identicality. One, being one does not mean being identical. See, the, the, the fingers on my hand are one with my hand. I have, of course, five fingers. And these fingers are one with my hand, but they are not identical. My fingers are not identical. So we need to understand that even though we are united, and even though we are part of the same body, which we call the body of life itself, or the body of God, if we dare, dare put it that way. Even though we are part of the same body human, we are not identical. And, and the oneness idea does not ask us to become identical. It merely asks us to look closely at what it would be like if all five fingers, even though they're quite different in the way they appear and the way they function, what would happen if all five fingers be, began to cooperate rather than to compete. Once again, this is an important political idea. Right now, as I'm sure you must know, in the United States, we're undergoing a campaign for president. And that campaign, as happens often in other countries, has gotten very nasty, and it has gotten very difficult for people who believe in oneness to be terribly happy about. Because we're noticing that it's not just about uh, contrasting ideas, it's about conflict. It seems as though we have created a political system that depends upon and that requires conflict to take place in order for somebody to make a point. So what we are asking you to help us do is to create a new kind of politics, a politics where we can exp express our differences, where we can have different ideas and different functions and different shapes, but still not compete with each other, but cooperate with each other. And there are ways to do that. And if we put our heads together, we can find ways to do that. We can find ways to honor our political differences without turning them into political conflict, much less military conflict, much less war. In the area of economics, what we are suggesting, those of us who believe in the idea of the new oneness, is really a new look. We are inviting humanity, and I hope you will join us in inviting humanity to take a new look at our entire worldwide economic system. It no longer seems right, does it? Does it seem right to you that 5% of the world's people control and hold 85% of the world's wealth and resources? It, it doesn't seem right, and the reason that it is that way is because we have a lopsided economic system that instead of producing the greatest benefit for the largest number of people produces the greatest benefit for the smallest number of people. So what we need is a way to overturn our economic system, not by means of revolution, but by means of a soft, quiet, gentle rearranging of our human understandings, of our human story, and of our human priorities to come up with a new idea of what it means to be human and to see if that new idea can't produce a different kind of world economic system that still rewards incentive, that still rewards individuality, that still rewards superior performance, but that does not divide the rewards in such a way that the tiniest percentage of the world's people hold the largest percentage of the world's wealth and resources. And we will have, in the days of the new oneness, a new definition of wealth as well. 
wealth will no longer be defined as who has the most toys or who has the most luxury. Wealth will be defined as quality of life. And the purpose of acquiring wealth and distributing wealth will shift. The purpose will now become the sharing and the uplifting of quality of life. And uh, that is going to be a major change in the psychology of wealth uh, on the planet. When wealth is seen as quality of life and not simply possessions, you see, quality of life and not simply possessions, when wealth is seen as quality of life, then all of the mechanics of society, its politics, its economics, its business ventures, all of the mechanics of society begin to direct their attention toward the creation of a higher quality of life rather than the creation of wealth in the old sense of the word. So again, we invite you at this conference to begin discussing ways, to begin exploring ways, to begin suggesting ways in which a new economic definition of wealth can be put into the marketplace of ideas. Currently, economics is what I call wasteonomics. I don't know how the translator is going to translate that, but those of you who speak English might enjoy my little play on words. World, economics is really wasteonomics. In other words, we are not being very economical in our economics. It is not economical to run the world the way we're running it. May I give you one example? Some years ago, I lived in an apartment complex, in a big apartment building. Everybody in that apartment complex had their own vacuum cleaner. Everybody in that apartment complex had their own washer, clothes washer, and their own clothes dryer. That's, and many, many other things that were owned individually by many people. In the United States, the economy is a wasted, wasteful economy. Everybody in that apartment building had their own car. As a matter of fact, many people had two cars, and I know one person who actually had three cars. And that's what I call wastonomics. It's not necessary for everybody in an apartment building to have their own vacuum cleaner. What would stop people from saying, how about if we have one vacuum cleaner on every floor? And you do your vacuuming on Monday, and I'll do mine on Tuesday, and she'll do hers on Wednesday, and they'll do theirs on Thursday. And all four apartments on that floor can share the same vacuum cleaner. You know, if I'm using a simple example now. Please forgive me. I don't mean to be simplistic about this, but I'm using a simple example. If everybody were to act in that way, creating a plurality of use and a singularity of benefit, rather than a singularity of use and a disbursement of the benefit that is so dispersed that, that very many people do not benefit. Can you imagine how many fewer vacuum cleaners we would have to make every year? And if we made fewer vacuum cleaners, can you imagine where those resources could go to how we might redirect that manufacturing resource? Again, forgive me, I know that I'm using a simple example, but it's a powerful example. The same thing with a washer and dryer. Many apartment buildings, as you know, have a washer and dryer complex downstairs. And all the um, residents of that apartment go downstairs to do their laundry, but some apartment complexes do not. Some have a washer and dryer in every single unit so that people can get up, you know, and do their wash in the middle of the night, I guess, whatever they think they're going to do. But it's not necessary to have that kind of wasteonomics. We do not have to duplicate and duplicate and endlessly duplicate all of the mechanical accoutrement, all of the mechanical devices that help us live our lives the way we would like to live our lives. How many times a week do you use a vacuum cleaner? Once a week? Maybe twice if something spills? How many times a week do you use your washer and dryer? Twice a week? Maybe three times a week on a very, in a very busy week? And the rest of the time, it stands idle.